Hey everybody, today we're going to just do a quick overview of what are NeoVim options and how we start configuring them. And then I wanna give you an example of how you could change it on a per language kind of basis. So the reason I wanna start with this is I was actually recording something about TreeSitter. I got so frustrated with the default way that we're sort of indenting inside of Lua that I said, okay, we need to, we need to do something different. You'll see why immediately. Let's say we do if true then, eight spaces really <laughs> eight eight spaces wow no thank you and uh it's in fact it's actually a tab it's like actually a tab character and so i'm thinking no we don't want this at all we don't want this so how do we change this right so we're going to use vim.opt this is kind of like a table that has a bunch of nice ways of setting options inside of neovim and so we can do vim.opt and the thing that we're looking for here is called shift width. And if we set this to four and remember from last time, we can do space X to run the current line. Now we do if true, then much better, much better. Uh, now we can do uh, print much better and okay, nice. So that part's okay, that part's okay. And maybe that's what I want sort of my default situation to be, but what if I wanted to set two space indenting just for Lua files. The way that I prefer doing this is, and we'll go back to the command line here so we can see this. You're going to make a make dir after. So you're going to make an after folder. And then inside of that folder, make dir after, we'll do FT plugin. Now, there's a little bit of history here. The reason that we want to make it in the after directory is because I want these things to run after all the default configuration, okay? Um, and NeoVim has a way of automatically loading these files afterwards, which is really helpful in case you're trying to override a value that might be the default NeoVim value for that file type. So we do that. So we make a new after folder. And inside of here, we have FT plugin. <laughs> plugin. Wow, that probably was loud for you. Sorry. Uh, FT stands for file type. And in NeoVim, file type is sort of equivalent to language, right? So what are we going to do inside of here? We're going to make an NVim after FT plugin, and we'll do Lua.Lua. .lua. So the first part of the name here, this Lua part here, is the name of the file type. So you'll notice right here, right here, this spot right here, See how it says Lua? That's because we're in a Lua file type, okay? You should have that same thing if you've been following along. And now, since we saved that shift width thing, if I do if true, then return end, you'll see that's a nice four spaces now, not eight and a tab, which is better. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to do vim.opt. And in this case, we can actually do opt local, which is a way of saying, hey, just for just for this file, can you do something for me? I'm gonna say shift width equals two. Okay, so a really cool thing about FT plugins is that if we just re-edit this file by just typing E and opening it again, if we do if true, then, boom, two spaces like that, okay? So this is the way that you can start configuring options on a per file type basis. And I tend to do something that, it's just my old preference from when I used to write Vim script more often. I use something like this. I'll say like set equals this, and then I'll just do set shift width equals two. We could do set number equals true, set relative number equals true. And then if we reopen these, you'll see that those options all get set for this current file because I happen to be inside of a Lua file type. And so you can sort of play around with some of the options and the values that you like. Um, that's sort of how I like to configure those. And then, like I said, if you're doing TypeScript, you do TypeScript.Lua. If you're doing Go, you would do Go.Lua. Any of the options that you feel like you need to set, uh, you can do them all here. And I think that it's pretty nice. And later, once we add fuzzy finding, it'll be very easy to get to all of the options for any particular file type with a single keystroke. Okay, that's it for today. Tomorrow, we'll probably be here with Envim Tree Center. Unless I get mad about something else, then we'll be recording a different intermediate video. Bye!